Hey everybody, my name is Lucas and in this video we are going to set up a system for getting things done or GCD for short using Notion. Notion is a tool that has been growing in popularity for the past year or two and I see why. I've tried using it for, the couple, uh, for a couple of days now to set up a GCD system to present to you all here. But a first disclaimer I gotta give you guys is, man, this is a versatile tool. I would really describe it as a life management tool more than anything, less than anything, I should say, because, wow, you can do so much with this. I think that is also one of its uh, shortcomings in one respect. If you try to be good at everything, you cannot be perfect at anything. But still, I think we've managed to create a relatively solid and comprehensive GTD system here. But I'm also curious to hear from you guys, how are you using Notion? Because I know there are gonna be people watching this video that have been using it for longer than I have. So I'll be happy to read your comments and suggestions. Either way, let's jump in because uh, what we're gonna do here is look at how this system is set up for GTD in this case. And you can see right away that we are really utilizing the different pages as categories. Uh, to start, for starters, we have kind of these runway categories. Obviously, you have your inbox, and this is just one page, and you can just literally drop anything, any thoughts you have. It doesn't matter really. It's about simplicity and ease of processing later on. Uh, just drop it all in there, and this is where you then move on to process it into the other notebooks that we'll take a look at. One of those is obviously next actions. Now for next actions here, we're going to use the table view. So you can use several views in Notion and you can select the table view. And then at the left hand side, you have the title by default. So this is just task and you put the name of the task here. We wanna work from context, very important. So this is where you actually use the multi-select property type. And as you type uh, options in here, they will be added to the uh, selection uh, that you can have available for any future tasks that you add to the table. So in this case, I've already added a couple and context, I always color them blue whenever I can. So I did that here as well for the uh, context multi-select option. Uh, then there's the time needed dimension. Some people prefer to use energy, high or low. That's fine as well, of course. It's all about your contexts. Either way, I have some options set up here too. I've colored them orange and that way it's nice to view and to use. Lastly, there's the status. So uh, this is just a check mark. And by using a filter, which is where status with the check mark is not complete, uh, that's what it will show. In other words, when I complete an action, you will see that it disappears from the list. However, it's not removed because if I change this filter back around or better yet, remove the filter altogether, just for the sake of demonstration, you will see that every task is now back and now the functionality of the tasks being removed is also gone. So here's where you can see that versatility in action because there are so many ways you can set it up. This is just one simple way. Obviously, you can also filter for certain contexts. So I can add a filter, I can select one of the dimensions from this table or database as it's called in Notion. I can select the context and then I wanna see everything that I can do from home because I'm at home and there we go, we see all the actions. We can complete them, we can do anything we want with those. Last interesting item here has to do with projects because sometimes you do wanna see which project is this related to. It's just a nice thing to have. So what you'll see here is that I'm actually using the um, relations uh, type uh, property, um, which allows me to link to the project and it's actually coming from the project itself. So we're moving on to the second category on the left here, uh, uh, like the ground level, uh, uh, from the ground level to a level higher to projects. And here you can see that I'm using sub pages, which you can do here, quickly add a page inside it says, to add specific projects within this category. So here as well, I have a table. And the reason is that I made this project clean the house and I need to clean my kitchen as and clean my living room as tasks uh, that are a part of that project. So if you can see here, you can see that the property type is relation. That allows you to select uh, inputs from another database, which you've seen we have set up here under next actions. So it really allows me to pull anything that is present in the next actions table, including something that's related to another project, which obviously we don't want, so we don't select it. Now this is good, but it's still not to the level of something like Todoist, which really allows you to uh, 
already have that set up because again, Notion is not a dedicated task manager. It is so much more than that. So this is one example of where I feel, you know, it works, you can do it, but it does take some manual setting up and managing more than more so than with other tools. So that's not fantastic, but it works. Uh, speaking of the other project, this is actually a demonstration of how you can use it to kind of create a sequential project. So here you have three columns that have to do with me creating a quarterly report for my work, whatever that is. So first I have to prepare it. Now that's something I've already done. So in that case, I uh, removed the link from the task and just uh, cross it, which you can easily do. So designing and markup is very easy. You can see it right here. Uh, it's there. That way I can tell on the project level, what is my progress. And I can only enter phase two once I've completed everything in phase one, right? So now that we've done that, I can actually add the relations property into the second stage because that's where I am. And that's where you see this action, which we already saw under next actions too. However, the third phase is not ready yet because I haven't completed this item. So once I have completed it, I can obviously uh, find it here. Now, for some reason, it's not here. Again, this is what I meant with, you know, the manual setup. There's probably some filter I have still going on. Yep, I do. So I need to remove this first. So that's kind of cumbersome in my opinion. But either way, we have it now and we can complete it. And now that it's completed, we can move into the project it's related to if we want to. This is something we do uh, during our weekly review at the very latest, of course. And uh, we can actually change this property type to text. And we just click here to see what it is. Well, we can remove it. Again, this is what I mean with it being a bit cumbersome. Now it works. And now I guess, you know, we can uh, type it over, I guess copy pasting works too. But you know, this is really why I think, again, it works, but it's not really a fluid experience. And now we can then turn this into a relation type property, you'll find it under advanced, select the database, next actions, create relation. And now we're able to pull up any action from next actions. However, obviously, it will need to be present in that table first. So now we need to create the action here, and relate it and so on and so forth. So that's the basic premise of how the system works uh, on the task management level. And I would argue this is the weakest portion because again, it just requires some manual setup in a way that a uh, sophisticated task manager already is miles ahead of. However, where this system really stands out for me is in how comprehensive it is, because here you see that the tickler file is also a table which includes a reminder functionality, which is great to have. So this is manually set up, but remind me about something, something remind me on this particular date. Now, this is using the date property, which is great. And you can just fill out a date is a great experience to fill it out. It recognizes it straight away. And you can also set me uh, a reminder for the day of the event or any other day if you wish so. So that's where you can collect everything you want to be reminded about without needing a separate tool for that. That's good stuff. Someday maybe I also like that because you can again use the sub pages to really categorize it or put some general items within the main page. And then maybe something like a list of books you want to read. Uh, you can format that in any way you wish. Notion is really strong with that, although sometimes this is a bit slow, as you can see. Uh, now, again, this is what I meant with not using it to its fullest potential. I've made this look really simple. The only thing I've done uh, to kind of customize it to my liking in terms of design is actually add an icon, which you can do here. You can also have it be in cus a custom image or a preset emoji. That's just really important to me, at least in making it fun to use. It really should be fun to use and emojis or other kind of visual uh, in input can make it so much more fun. And that's where Notion really stands out for me, especially if you consider the next category, which is agenda. So that's like the talking points you have for certain people or certain meetings you might want to go into. Now, let's say I have a colleague and her name is Jane. So I made a page here for Jane and I was even able to add her picture as a symbol for her dedicated page. And I can add anything I want to ask her, talk to her about, or so on and so forth, uh, because I was able to upload an image of her that I pulled up from our, I don't know, Slack workspace or our website or something. You can make this much more sophisticated, much more pretty even, and add many more design elements, but at its core, 
uh, in terms of functionality, that's what this video is about. So that's what you're seeing here. But don't think this is the end of it. Notion is really strong in terms of designing your system in the way you like. Areas of focus, uh, goals, vision, and purpose. To me, uh, yeah, these are uh, similar in how they are set up. So again, uh, you, you want to use sub pages for certain areas of focus you have. For goals, I actually have it collected in one table with just some example goals like being debt free by June 30th or something. You can, uh, again, you know, put in your goals uh, like relatively mid to long term in this table. And you could even use the uh, relation property to relate certain uh, or, or interlinking properties to link to certain projects that are related to this goal if you wish. It's all, it's all possible vision and purpose i kept this empty because generally this is just information at its core and you can just type uh, at, at the very least uh what you think it is keep it nice and minimal or design it to your liking make it as elaborate as you wish that's all possible um so that is it uh, at its core a, a gtd system that i think is very uh comprehensive now uh for reference uh, that is also something you can store uh, in many different ways. I actually uh, no, no, noticed that I forgot to add it here, but it's just a matter of adding it as a separate category. And uh, it also has a uh, web page clipper that you can use to save it into your Notion workspace. Articles you've read, uh, important information, documents. Uh, if you press uh, slash, you can see just how many commands are at your disposal to add information to a page. Uh, which includes formatting, but it includes file types like images, videos, embedding, audio, files, PDFs, Google Drive, tweets from social media, Figma, Abstract, all these design tools. It just doesn't stop. There are so many integrations. So that's where it really gets my uh, major you know, uh, points in terms of versatility, in terms of uh, uh, integration and in terms of how comprehensive it is. The only shortcoming of that, naturally, I would say, is that it's not the best task manager out there, which frankly is the most important portion of any productivity system, including GTD. But if you can live with this manual kind of setup and, 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 and you can surely tweak it and tune it to your liking. So overall, this shouldn't be a deal breaker for you. And Notion is absolutely a great tool to try a good tool to use for GTD. So I can definitely recommend you to try it out. Lastly, uh, good to know that they also have a very kind of welcoming setup in terms of uh, not forcing you to pay right away. You can earn credit and use that to use the pro version by just performing simple actions such as logging in on the web version, on the desktop version, the mobile version, importing from other software, whatever it is, they are listed here. You can earn some credit for it. That's a nice touch. I really like that they're not purely interested into right making money from you right away, but uh, easing the onboarding experience for you. So I am, again, very interested to see what kind of systems you guys have. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, if you haven't used it before, try out Notion. You can find it using the link in the description. Thanks for watching.